you to discuss these words. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Father God, we thank you. God, we praise you. We honor you. God, we magnify you. We lift you. God, we thank you for just being who you are. We thank you for the way you do things. We thank you for your presence in this place. God, we thank you, Lord, for you are God. You are the conquering king of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Father God, we praise you today. We honor you today. We glorify you. We magnify you, Father, for you are God. Lord, we come, Father God, asking you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for bad imaginations. Forgive us, for Father God, for yielding to temptation. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Father God, for sins of omission and commission. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in this place. Bless us, Father God, that your word will go forth. Bless us, Lord, that your praises will go forth. Bless us, Lord, that we will pray unto you and you will answer our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for another gathering. We thank you for another chance to honor you. And God, we praise you today. Now, Lord, we ask you that we see Jesus out of all who walk in, all who sit. We ask you to bless us to see Jesus. That Jesus will rearrange our thought patterns. That Jesus, Father God, will, will bless us in this meeting. That Jesus, Father God, will be first and foremost on our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we ask you to keep us now. Bless our focus to be on Jesus. Bless our attitudes to receive Jesus. Bless us as we sing unto you, Father God. Our hearts will be rearranged and turned toward you. And Lord, we ask you to keep me low. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. And thank God.
again to the book of Revelation chapter 5 verses 8 through 10. The book is Revelation chapter 5 verses 8 through 10. Brother Whitlock, if you would put that on low for me, it would, it would help just a little bit. Just. Revelation chapter 5 verses 8 through 10. You can find Revelation in the back of the Bible at the end of the Bible, in the New Testament, Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. In found you will discover these words. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, yeah. saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. I want to talk about the worthy lamb. The worthy. The worthy lamb. Well, last Sunday we talked about God is worthy and he is still worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yes, Today we focus on the Lamb, the Lamb of God that was slain, the Lamb of God that was sacrificed, the Lamb of God who has blessed us again. The Lamb of God who has redeemed us. We ought to worship him. And whatever you do, you don't want to take away, and the text does not take away from the worship of God himself. For we serve a triune God. One who is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we've already learned in 1 John, in order to worship God, you must honor Jesus himself. John says in 1 John that we need to make sure that we keep Jesus on the forefront. Those of you who are in Bible study can say amen. We have to understand that 
when we honor Jesus, we're not taking anything away from the glory of God himself. But last week I said to you that God deserved it. And today we focus on the seals being open. The seals represent torment that God will, will begin to pour out on the earth after the church has been raptured. I said to you last week that John saw in chapter 4 of Revelation, he saw a great multitude of worshipers yes, round the throne of God. He included four beastly creatures. He included 24 elders yes, around the throne of God, and they worshiped him day and night. Amen. Says you last week, this ought to be the position and the posture of our local churches. Amen. Our churches ought to worship God day and night. Yes, I said to you on last week, it doesn't matter what you're going through, what you've been through, or what you're headed to. You ought to have an attitude of worshiping God. Yes, sir. Somebody said the other day, when praises go up, blessings come down. I want to say to you today, regardless if you choose to praise him or not, God will assign somebody else or something else to praise him. Yes. And yeah, we ought to honor him because he is God. Yes. said to you last week that he wasn't elected God. He wasn't selected as God. He wasn't voted in as God. He wasn't legislated as God. He just is God. He is God all by himself. There is no one who compares to him. There is no one who can compete with him. There is no one who really can measure up in contrast to him. He is God. That's why we come today and, and let you know that we are here to worship the Lamb. For the last 17 and a half years, you've heard me say, blessed to the Lamb. Yes, yes. Every message before, every message after, you've heard me say, bless the Lamb yes, of God. Yes, yes. Today, I want to deal with why we bless him. I want to deal with why we honor him. I want to deal with why we glorify him, for he is the Lamb of God. When we look at the text, beginning at verse number one, we will find out that God is sitting on the throne. And as God is sitting on the throne, God is holding in his right hand a stroll, which is, in the English language, a book. As God sits on the throne, God is looking to forecast what's going to happen in the near future. I'm sure your grandparents said to you, the world is coming to an end. I'm sure your parents said to you, the world is coming to an end. And I'm sure you're telling your children and your grandchildren, get ready because the world is coming to an end. Yes, the world is coming to an end, but if you're saved, and Brother Whitlock dealt with it during the Sunday school lesson, you need to understand that you don't have to go through all these things if you're born again. It doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter what nation or what group of people you've come from. God wants to reach you. His desire is that none should perish. His desire is that every man is saved. Right. Every woman, every boy, every girl, God desires that you are born again. In verse number one, it says that God is sitting on the throne and, and God has a stroll. He has a book in his hand. And this book has writing on the inside of and on the backside of it. It's in God's hand. Verse number two de de declares to us that the angel of the Lord began to ask the question, who is worthy to break the seal? You see, the seals represent, the first seven seals represent the, the, first, uh, the first torment that God would pour out on this earth. So the seal has to be broken in order for somebody to read. The angel asked the question, who is worthy to open or to break the seals? 
The angel began to look to and fro throughout the earth, throughout heaven, and there was none worthy to open the seal. No one in heaven, no one on earth, no one under the earth was able to break the seal. Verse number four declares that the angel began to weep because he couldn't find anybody worthy. No, no, the future was at stake. The future of that God was going to speak to man was at stake because there was no one worthy to open the seal. Therefore, the angel began to weep. Let me just share with you today, we have great futures ahead of us, and we need to make sure that we are in line to receive what God has before us. The angel began to weep because no one was worthy to open the seal. Then the elder stands up in verse number five. And the elder says, stop your weeping, stop your crying. Here he is, the Lion of Judah, the, the Lion of Judah, the root of David. Yeah, he is the Lion of Judah. He is the one that stands with power. He is the one who has conquered. He is the one who has overcome. Yes, yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. We worship him today because he has been triumphed. Yes. He has been triumphant as he triumphed over the devil, hell, and the grave. Let me tell you, that's right there enough to shout about in the fact that Jesus the Christ has been triumphant. Jesus the Christ has been over, has overcome. Jesus the Christ has overcome and been triumphant over, first of all, your temptation. He, he has been triumphant over your temptation. Then he's triumphed over sin. Yeah, he, regardless of what the devil did, regardless of what the devil threw at him, he did not sin. He did not yield to temptation. And you ought to be singing this song every day of your life. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. He says, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, he is the great defeater of temptation. He defeated sin, and he defeated pain. Not only did he defeat pain, he defeated suffering. Yeah, right. He took suffering like a champ. Yeah. He has defeated pain. He's defeated sin. He's defeated temptation. He's defeated suffering. And he has defeated fear. Yeah. He has defeated fear. He has defeated fear. Paul says to Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. So Jesus has been triumphant over fear. Not, have, not only has he been triumphant over fear, he's been triumphant over death. <laughs> he is the first fruit from the dead. He is the only one that got up from the dead and still lives today. He is the first fruit from the dead. He showed man a preview of what we will have when Jesus cracked the sky. He has triumphed over death. And not only has he triumphed over death, he has triumphed over the devil. The devil, the devil claims that he's mighty. The devil claims that he's like a roaring lion running throughout this world trying to find somebody that he can divide. He wants you to feel like he got it going on. He wants you to think that he is mighty. He may be mighty, but he's not almighty. He, he has been pushed aside. God promised in the garden that the woman's seed will bruise the head of the snake. And, and then uh, he, he promised that, that, the, that the snake will bruise the heel of man. Let me tell you, I'd much rather have my heel bruised than my head crushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus has triumphed over the devil. He is the lion of Judah. Then he says he's the root of David. He's in the lineage of David where God has promised that he will always have a king in the lineage of David. Let me just share with you, Jesus Christ himself will always be the king of kings. There is none like him. There is none who compares to him. There is none who can measure up to him. He is the king of kings. He is the root of David. Verse number seven says to us, Jesus take the book from God's right hand. And when he takes the book from God's right hand and we move to verse number eight, we will find out that there's always a response. Whenever Jesus is on the scene, you ought to respond to him. 
whenever God passes through and reveals himself and whenever he manifests himself, you ought not be able to hold yourself. Because he is the great I am. He is God all by himself. Whenever Jesus makes a move, you ought to make a move just like that. When Jesus takes the book, the four beastly creatures and the 24 elders fall down before him. This phrase, fall down, means that they fell prostrate before him. They laid completely out before him. There was no negotiation. There was no interruption. And there was no misunderstanding. They wanted the world to know. And that's why John writes these, these books to us this morning to remind us that there ought not be any negotiation on whether or not you're going to honor God or honor the devil. Right. That's right. Get right the Antichrist right is running. Sister Henry says name start with a T. The Antichrist is alive and well in the midst of us. So it doesn't matter how holy we are. It doesn't matter how sanctimonious we can become. The Antichrist is on his job. He is moving throughout this world. The Antichrist is on his job. He is busy while you're asleep. He's busy while you're dancing. He's busy while you're eating. He's busy while you're in school. He's busy. The devil is always busy. He's always on his job. And because the devil is always on his job, we ought to get on our job. When Jesus takes the book, the four beastly creatures bow down. The 24 elders bow down. They fall prostrate right before the Lamb. Of God. Not only did they bow down in worship, but they also bowed down with harps. They bowed down with golden bowls. And these golden bowls was full of the prayers of the saints. I stopped by to tell you when you look at God, when you think about the goodness of God, when you think about what God has done for you. You ought not have to go to a sanctified church to understand that when you think about the goodness of God and how he brought me over, my soul cries out, hallelujah to the Lamb. The elders fell down. The elders represent the church. They are the leaders of the church. They represent the church. And the whole church ought to follow the leadership of the elders. The elders bow down before him. The beastly creatures bow down before him. They are playing a harp, this soothing music that the book of Revelation talks about. And how when David uh, went before Saul, he would play this harp and he would soothe his anger and soothe his pain. Let me tell you, they were, they were excited about worshiping God. My question to you today, are you excited about the worship of God. Are you, are you excited that God has given you another chance just to say, Lord, I thank you. Are you excited that God has blessed you again to be who you are and to do what you do? I tell you, God is a good God. Amen. Let me tell you how I know he's a good God because we are breathing and inhaling and exhaling. And, and because we are in our, most of us are in our right mind. And, and because we are doing what we want to do. Let me tell you, God is such a good God because he has given us a free moral agency and that free moral agency is to make our own choices and do what we want to do. And he has placed us in the great United States of America when we got choices of where we want to worship. Let me tell you, he's a good God. He, he is. He's a good. He's a good God. They bow down and they worship him. They bowed down and they praised him. They bowed down and they adored him. That ought to be the scenery in your house every now and then. In your house every now and then, you ought to find yourself. Jesus says that you ought to go into your secret closet, shut the door, and after you shut the door, you ought to pray to the almighty God and the God who hears in secret rewards you openly. The Bible also teaches that the congregation ought to come together. Right. 
And when the congregation comes together, the congregation ought to come together in prayer and in praise. It ought not be anything going on other than prayer, praise, and preaching and with the understanding when we come together. And I'm not talking about just in this building. We come together on the parking lot. We come together in the meat market. When the church come together, folk ought to see the church coming together and you ought not be ashamed to lift your voices to praise him in the midst of it. Every now and then, every now and then, your co-workers ought to say, there she go again, there he goes again. Every now and then, you ought to forget where you are. Every now and then, when you think about who God is, not just what he's done, when you think about who God is, your soul ought to cry out in the midst of a business meeting while you're sitting around the table. You ought to say, glory, hallelujah. Because he's God. The angels, the four beastly creatures, and the 24 elders show us what we ought to do. They're around the throne of God. Verse 9 declares, they decided to sing a brand new song. Yeah. Let me tell you, you ought to have a new song. You ought to have a new prayer. <laughs> you, you, your, your song ought to be new. Your, your song, and, and it, it doesn't have to be transcribed by any musician either. It, it, your song ought not be one that somebody has already penned. I, I know the song sounds good. I, I, I never would have made it had it not been for the Lord. I know it sounds good. But you ought to have your own song by which you sing because God has been good to you and God has blessed you. The angels declare when they saw the beauty of Jesus, when they saw the presence of Jesus, when Jesus qualified to open the seal, they began to praise him and worship him. If you having problems praising him on earth. <laughs> if you having problems giving it up because somebody's sitting next to you or somebody may be watching you and, and that's not very dignified to, to honor him. Let me tell you, you better give up on yourself and give up on your neighbor simply because the God we serve, he has all the honor and the glory and he's worthy to be praised. The moment, the moment, the moment Jesus takes these seals, this book, and he goes to break the seal, he, he just, they just know his intentions. The moment Jesus makes a motion, these creatures get excited about who Jesus is. The moment if God has not done all you want him to do, you ought to get excited about who Jesus is. The moment Jesus, if you just think about him, you ought to start thanking him simply because he is Jesus. Verse number nine says it like this. It says, they begin to sing a brand new song. You better get you a new song. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a new song every year. I'm not talking about a new song every month. I'm not talking about a, a new song every week. I'm not talking about a new song every day. I'm not talking about a new song every minute. I'm not talking about every, a new song every second. I'm talking about when you just think of God. You ought to sing a brand new song. You, you ought to sing a song where God can get the glory and others can see you glorifying him. We don't, we don't do things for shape, form, or fashion. We don't, we don't do things for an outside show. We do it because God has been good. And God has been good, and he is good all the time. Let me tell you, in the midst of your trouble, he is good. In the midst of your bereavement, he is good. In the midst of your pain and your sickness, he is good. The God we serve is just a good God. Matter of fact, John says in 1 John that God is love, and he can't be anything but love because he is love. Love flows from his DNA, and we ought to worship him just like that. You ought to have your new song. The song ought not be the same. You ought not sing the same still song. Right. You, you, you got to have a new song. They tell me Beyonce came out with a new song. And I mean, folk are flocking. Folk are paying money for it. What about your song? You ought not be singing and jerking and switching like Beyonce. But you ought to be able to jump up and down and, and wave your hand and raise your voice and, and wave back at God and give God a love offering simply because he has put something else in your heart. You ought to have a new song. You, you, you ought not have the same old song. And you ought not have the same old prayer. Some of us grew up in churches. 
where we could tell when he prayed, we could write, and you know, children like to listen to seniors. And we go back home and we have, have prayer meetings just like seniors have. We used to go back home and, and we knew that this one deacon would pray the same thing every time he got up. So we didn't have Atari. We didn't, we didn't have Sega Genesis. We, we didn't have our past. We, we would go back home and get under an oak tree and play church. And, and we would play church, and, and I didn't want to have anything to do with being the preacher. I didn't, I didn't want to have anything to do with that. But I love being a deacon because I knew being a deacon, I could pray that same prayer with the same fervor that he prayed it. Lord, here we are again with our head bowed down toward Mother Chuck. Lord, is me, oh Lord. <laughs> Standing in the need of prayer. Lord is not my mother. Lord is not my father. Lord is not my sister. Lord is not my brother. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Here I am once again, Father God. I come not for any shape, form, or fashion. I come not for any outside show. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And when he gets through, the others will begin to sing, if I don't wake up in the morning. Everything will be all right. We would go back home and we would play it out just like they did it every Sunday. I'm telling you, you need a new song. You, you need a new prayer. You, you, need a, you need something fresh. Jesus says that you ought not be repetitious. You, you ought not pray out in front of folk just to be seen. He didn't say don't pray in front of people. He said don't pray in front of people so you can be seen. You ought not worship because of people. And you ought not refrain from worshiping because of people. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I believe church ought to catch on fire. Yeah. I believe that church ought to catch on fire in such a way that every Sunday, every Wednesday, we got a praise going on. Let me tell you, in Chronicles, the Bible declares that when they came into the church, the choir song, and they begin to praise on the instrument until smoke filled the room, until when the preacher stood up to preach, he couldn't preach until the cloud lowered down because God's presence was in the room. I'm telling you, you ought to sing a new song. You ought to praise the same God and worship him in such a way that you ought to take this thing to another level. We, we ought not, people ought not, the children ought not be able to predict what you're going to do. They ought, we ought not be able to go home and play church the same way every time. And next Sunday, we ought to be able to do church on a different level. We, we ought to be able to worship him like the angels in heaven. Let me tell you, they paint a beautiful picture of what worshiping God is all about. The Bible says that they sung a new song. And their song went like this. You are worthy to take the stroll and open the seal. Let me tell you, there were angels there, there were creatures there, there were elders there, there was none in heaven, none on earth, none under the earth that was worthy. There's only one, one, there's only one who is worthy, and he is the Lamb of God. His name is Jesus. He is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. He is worthy to worship. Let me tell you, Muhammad may not be worthy, but Jesus is worthy. Confucius is not worthy, but Jesus is worthy. Aristotle is not worthy, but Jesus is worthy. And that's why we show up on Sunday, Wednesday, and throughout the week to say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, we worship you. God, we honor you. God, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you, for you are worthy. It's not like him. Oh He's worthy. He says, he say, you are worthy to take the stone. You are worthy to open the seal. Then they give the reason why he's worthy. He says, for you were slain and redeemed us to God by your blood. He says, no one else was worthy. Matter of fact, the angels wasn't worthy. But God, you made sure that your son Jesus, the only begotten son of God, he alone is worthy. Let me tell you, if you're going to worship, if, if you're worshiping anything or anybody else, you might as well stop play acting. 
Stop role playing because he alone is worthy. And let me just share with you, rolling on the floor doesn't demonstrate that you're worshiping him. Speaking in other tongues don't, doesn't demonstrate that you're worshiping him. I'm talking about worshiping him from the inside out where, where folk can see the joy and, and God can feel the connection back and forth between him and you. He says, you are worthy to take the stroll and open the seal for you have been slain. He was slain. He was slain. Let me tell you, it wasn't a pretty picture that we see on YouTube. It wasn't a pretty picture we see on Lifetime. It wasn't a pretty sight we see on TV or the internet. He was slain. He was beat down. Plugs of meat and, and vessels were pulled from his back. They whipped him for you and for me. Let me just stop and tell you now, you need to understand the scripture that says to us, by his stripes we are healed. It's not by his stripes that you are healed physically. It's because of the stripes that he, they beat him with. You are spiritually healed. You are healed spiritually because of the stripes that were beat by our Lord. They beat him. They whipped him. They marred him. They killed him. He's worthy because he's the one that was slain. No one in this room, no one under the sound of my voice would voluntarily give up their life. He was slain. It was a voluntary death. It was a precarious death. He voluntarily gave up his life in a precarious way. He gave his life for you and me. This same Jesus knew you were going to do wrong. This same Jesus knew you wouldn't accept it. But he was slain. He, he, he died for you and he died for me. He was killed. Mean men killed him. Mean men beat him. Mean men hung him. Mean men speared him. Mean men took him. Gave him to, to Joseph of Arimathea. And he buried him in Joseph's brand new tomb. He was slain for you and for me. So let me tell you, if you weren't slain, then I need to answer to Jesus and not to you. If you weren't slain, if you didn't give up the ghost, a voluntary death, then I need to answer to Jesus. You need to be answering to Jesus. You need to answer to the one who was slain, who died for you, who gave his life for you, who was slain for you, so much so until you are now saved. He was slain. He goes on to say, and you redeemed us to God by your blood. This word redeem means to buy back. It is a purchase. God was dissatisfied until Jesus satisfied him with his blood. He became the sacrifice that made a way out of no way. Regardless of how long you've been saved, let me tell you a secret. You are on your way to hell. But Jesus redeemed you. He bought you back. You know, we growing up, we had what was known as S and H green stamps, and we would put those green stamps in the book, and then we would go in and cash them in, and that's that was known as redeeming your stamps. In other words, what you were going to buy, you couldn't get them without a book full of stamps. And everything had its own value. And if you didn't have a book of stamps, you couldn't buy things that were worth a book of stamps. Let me tell you, you had a value. And it was Jesus' blood that bought you back. God had to bring you back. He brought you back because Jesus' blood bought you back. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't pay your own debt. He paid a debt we couldn't pay. And he did it with his blood. He died. And after he died, they pierced him in his side. And out flowed the blood. That's why we sing the song, nothing, blood to blood. What can wash away our sin? 
nothing but the blood. His blood will never, never lose his power. We sing the song that says it flows as low as the lowest back. And it reaches the heights of the high mountain. His blood, Jesus' blood, will never, will never lose his power. That's enough for me to shout about. He, he redeemed us. He redeemed us with his blood. He, we, we have to be educated in the fact that it wasn't us that got it right. It was Jesus that got it right. You see, we are not saved because we are so good. It's because of what Jesus did for us over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He brought us back. He redeemed us. Back to God. By way of his power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, out of every tribe, yeah. out of every tongue, mm -hmm. every people, and out of every nation. Yeah. Let me tell you, they were right the other day when they said red, yellow, black, and white. Uh -huh. They all are precious yeah. and Jesus son. Yeah. That's why we shouldn't have discrimination. Regardless of our background, regardless of our nationality, regardless of our color, we should not have discrimination. We should not have prejudice. Simply because Jesus has redeemed us from every tongue, every tribe, every people, and every nation. You know, that's the reason why we're called New Beginning Church. That's the reason why we're called New Beginning Church, that you can get a new beginning at this church. We're called the New Beginning Church because we want to include everything and everybody. No roaches, no ants. We want to include every living being, every person with a soul. We want everybody to get to know Jesus from the beacon light that shines on the side of 4251. Sure, my road. We're the New Beginning Church. We ought to have a new beginning every day. I mean, I mean you know, and if you notice, the name of the church is not New Beginnings. It is new beginning. Because when you have a new beginning, that new beginning is repetitive. That new beginning is perpetual. That new beginning, that's why you don't have to get saved but one time. You get saved one time, and God has blessed you one time, and he's blessed you from now on. Now, you ought to have sanctification every single day of your life. You ought to do what's right. You ought to be set apart. You ought to do the things every single day of your life. But your salvation has come one time, and because it comes one time, you ought to live in it, and you ought to abide in it. Because Jesus died one time. <laughs> And he died for the whole world. He died for the whole nation. He died for every people. He died for every tongue. He died for every nation. Jesus Christ died for everybody. He didn't discriminate. Why should we discriminate? He says out of every tongue, every tribe, every people, every nation, he gave his blood for you. You ought to walk around and let people know I'm blood bought. But they ought to see that you're blood -bought. When they ask you, how do you put up with folk that misuse you? I'm blood -bought. Well, how do you handle, handle the things you used to do and you don't do them anymore? Don't you get tired of the temptation coming on to you? Tell them I'm dead blood ball. I was bought by the blood of Jesus because when you tell them you blood ball, it's going to open up a whole evangelistic moment for you and you'll be able to tell them because I'm blood ball, I am able to do what I can't do in myself. I'm able to imagine things that I couldn't imagine before because I'm blood ball. I just want to let you know whenever... How many of you get tired of the spam calls? How many of you get tired of, of the, the rotary calls? How, how many of you get tired of the sale and soliciting call? I'm going to tell you how to shut it down. You don't have to tell them to take you off the list. They'll voluntarily tell you to take you off the list. When they start talking about what you're selling, tell them that I've been blood bought. Tell them his name is Jesus. He, he paid the price for me. No, I don't want what you're selling, but I want to show you something that God has done for me. He did it for me before I'm born. I'm blood bought. What you mean you're blood bought? I want to tell you over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ bought me back. He brought me back. He bought me back. He purchased me back. And they'll shut the roller calls down. And they'll tell all their coworkers, don't call him. Don't call that number. You're going to get a sermon because one lady, one lady decided, she decided that she was going to sell me some land. 
She's going to sell me some land that I've never seen in a state where I've never been. And she's going to sell me at a discount rate. And, and the trip out part is it got, the longer the conversation became, the cheaper the land became. And she really thought that I was going to pick up my credit card and call out some numbers and give her the expiration date and then flip it over and give her the keypad on the backside. She really thought that. I told her my keypad and my expiration date along with my card is BR549. BR5, she, she began to type it in and write it down. I said, BR, she said, what's the rest of the number? I said, do it again, BR549. And she began to write it down. If you're over 50, you understand where I'm headed. Hee-haw, at hee-haw, they had a phone. And when they had the phone at hee-haw, the phone number was BR549. What you have to understand is, my phone number is BL00D. My phone number is blood ball. You have been blood ball. And because I've been blood ball, I walk with him. I talk with him. And he tells me not to go for these scams anymore. All you got to do is deliver your word. Deliver the word. Deliver the word. Deliver the word. This choir just sung that we're going to walk in his word. We're going to live by his word. We're going to be taught by his word. You have to know the word of God so you can deliver yourself from rotary calls. And when you start talking like that, guess what happens? Your calls decrease over and over. I, I've learned, I've learned that when I see a number that looks like my number, I can choose where I am whether I want to answer it or not. And if I if I'm just doing nothing, absolutely nothing that day, if I, and God has opened the door, Sister Irvin, I'm gonna let him know that Jesus bought me with a price over two thousand years ago. I'm gonna let him know that it was on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus bought me with his blood. I'm going to let him know that because he's bought me, one of these old days, I'm going to reign with him. I'm going to stand with him. I've been blood bought. I'm going to let them know that over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, right outside of Jerusalem, my Lord and your God, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. He's the worthy one. He gave his life for you. He gave his life for me. Me men killed him. They killed him on that cross. That's not how the story ends. They took him to Joseph's brand new tomb. They buried him there. But early that Thursday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And that's why I'm not going to wait till I get over yonder to praise him. I'm not going to wait till I get over yonder to worship him. I'm not going to wait till I get over yonder to pray to him. I'm going to start right now thanking God for who he is. Telling him what he's already done. Thanking God for how he used me. Thanking God for this beautiful setting that he shows in heaven. We praise him for his power. We praise him for his wealth. We praise him for his wisdom. We praise him for his strength. We praise him for his honor. We praise him before his glory because he is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Don't get tired down here because on the other side, we're going to worship the, Lord, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. He died for you and he died for me. And when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. The songwriter says it like this. This is just a reversal. When we get over there, we're going to really sing. We're going to celebrate over there. Because God has blessed us. And he has kept us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Will you join me over there? Say thank you, God. For one more time. Hallelujah. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. When we get over there, I'm really going to sing. I'm really going to sing. Last week I sung, holy, holy, holy. This week I'm going to say, Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy, but you have been slain before the foundation of the world. And he's available to us, even right now. The door of the church is open. The door is open. The door.
The door is open. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can get to know him. Just as you are, you can get to know him. His name is Jesus. He is the conquering king of Calvary. His name is Jesus. He's our way maker. His name is Jesus. He's our bridge over troubled water. His name is Jesus. He's my lean pole. His name is Jesus. He's the light, bright, and morning star. The door is open. Will you receive this Jesus? The one who makes a way out of no way. You need to receive him today. I hear you, you say, but pastor, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. You need to receive Jesus. As you are, he will receive you. But pastor, I'm too young. You're never too young. You can receive him at your young age. But pastor, I had to live the life. You can live that life through Jesus. He makes a way out of no way. The door is open. Will you trust him? Let him bless you. He's able to bless you. He's able to keep you. Will you come? The door is open. He alone is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He alone. He is worthy. 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 Christ the Lord. He's worthy. You are come. I hear you, you said, but I don't want those folks looking at me. Don't worry about the folk. The one who's worthy says come. The one who's worthy says come. The one who's worthy says come. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He's Christ. He's Christ the Lord. If you've never received him, just repeat this simple prayer after me and invite him into your life. Ask Jesus to come in so you can join in with us. You don't have to wait to chapter 5. You can get in there in chapter 4. What Apostle John said, heaven opened up. You can be in that number. As we continue to read, he says, I saw 144,000. And then John said, oop, I looked again. And I saw a number that no man can number. And they join in. And they join in and, and they should begin to sing along with the heavenly host. I'm in that number. You can be in that number today. Why don't you bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe that you're now born again. We believe that you will be joining in with us as we sing unto the Lord and praise him. If you're here and you don't have a church home or you're in between church home or you're listening and you're in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church. 
But Jesus, the worthy one, is honored and praised. This can be your home. But we believe that Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. The door is open. He alone. He alone. He alone is worthy. He alone. He alone is worthy. He 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 alone, he alone, he alone, he is worthy. He is worthy. Christ, Christ alone. He is the Lamb. He is, he is worthy. Christ the Lord. He is worthy. We, can, we really can't make it without. We can't make it without. We can't make it. We can't live without it. He is Christ. He is Christ. He's Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is our conquering King of Calvary. Jesus the Christ. He is our conquering King of Calvary. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Uh, there are white and blue envelopes for tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. And there are white and red envelopes for pastor's love offering. Please raise your hand and you will be served. You will be served. <coughs> For those of you who are, who are giving electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so. A P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to yield unto you. We thank you for blessing us with income and increase. We thank you for blessing us, Father God, as only you can. We ask you to bless us as we come to give. We come to give our gifts to you, Father God, for you alone. Our word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. From the pier to the front, bring forth the lowest ties off their sacrificial gifts. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you to survive. I'll pray for you. I even love you.
I have a card here, a thank you card. It says, it takes a special kind of person to care enough to take the time for others, to do whatever it takes to help somebody out. Thank you for everything you have done, for everything you have given. Thank you. NBC family from Sister Ann Paul and the Cameron family. Thank you, Sister Paul. As we know, uh, she has, she's in bereavement for her brother. We want to thank her for being faithful and thank her for her thank you call. Amen. 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 We're remembering J.R. Richard, the, uh, the towering tall J.R. Richard. Um, we are having J.R. Richard Day on Saturday, August the 13th, 2022. Uh, uh, Trinity Minden Hall. Let me look this one. All right, laugh now. Sooner or later, it'll be you. Trinity, Trinity Minden Hall Co Community Center. Uh, we are honoring the late, great J.R. Richard. Uh, Saturday the 13th of August at 3 p.m. through 6 p.m. If you can make it, it will be good for Sister Richard to see you there and uh, make sure that we come to honor the great man. He no longer sit in the second seat on the first, the first seat on the second row, but he is in heaven with the Lord, round the throne of grace. Amen. Grand holy, 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 you are worthy, oh Lord. So we want to celebrate my friend, our associate minister, J.R. Richard. Thank you so much. On our prayer list, we have Karen and Katrina Whitlock, Nicole Davis and family, Sister Ann Paul, Audrey Johnson, Z Z Zaminia Ortiz, Joe Nathan Brownlee, uh, Ed and Emma Brandon, Megan Davis, and Amity Hunter. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. God, we honor you and praise you. Lord, we thank you for those on this list. We ask you to bless, heal, and touch. We know you to be the great I am. You're the one who we need. You're the one who blesses us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us and bless these. Administer healing to their infirmities. Bless them, Father God, that they will rise up again to give you glory and thanks. Lord, we ask you to touch where the doctor doesn't know. Touch where the doctor can't know. Lord, we ask you to heal, strengthen, and deliver. Lord, we trust them in your hands. Bless every bereaved person. Encourage them walk with them and bless them to look to you. Lord, we ask you for your comfort. Now, Father God, we ask you to encourage those who are seeking blessings. Lord, we ask you to be a miracle worker. Lord, we ask you to bless in such a way that professionals will be amazed. That those who be who will receive will honor you in their presence. Lord, we ask you to take us to a new dimension of praising and honor you because what we see in you. Lord, we know you have all power. God, you made us. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pastor. We ask you to touch in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father God, to deliver blessings that have been long awaited, that we will be drawn closer to you. Lord, we know you can put the devil on the run, and we're asking you to do so. And Lord, we know you can do the impossible, and we're asking you to do that. That we will be careful, Lord, to give it back to you. That we'll be careful, Lord, to bless your name. 
that we will be careful, Lord, to rejoice over your blessings. And Lord, we thank you now. We glorify you, for you are God, and you are God alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank God. It is communion time. It's time when, when we gather together first Sundays, holidays, special days that mean much to our church that we celebrate what Jesus has done for us on Calvary. He died and rose. Jesus says to his disciples, for as often as you do this, you show forth my death and suffering until I come again. So we've come today to commemorate the moment that Jesus gave his life, broke bread, blessed it, and they ate. So we're coming today to, to pray over the bread, pray over the drink, that God will bless it. If you have any altar against anybody, whether they're in this room or not, there you go. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. That you will not drink damnation unto your soul. Father God, we thank you, Father, for communion. And we come now praying over this table. Bless the table. Bless the drink. Break. Bless the bread. Lord, we remember what Jesus has done. Don't let us ever forget, Father God, how he has given his life for us and he's still with us moving and showing us the right way now Lord we thank you thank you for the table thank you for the bread thank you for the drink thank you for blessing us to partake thank you Lord for saving our souls now we credit you for all these great things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
wants to be served? Has everybody been served who wants to be served?
you are dismissed. Amen.